All right, guys, so welcome to uh, day 10. We are pretty much halfway done the course. Okay, so this week we're going to wrap up uh, the calculus portion, and then next week we'll move into uh, vectors, what we call vectors. Okay, so we're going to revisit a topic that you guys would have seen in grade 10. Okay, it's optimization. And you'll recall with the word optimization, you guys should remember this term, completing or, or completing the square this phrase sorry that's the word I was looking for phrase okay it's completing the square and we dealt with um, typically well, all our questions were the entire unit was based on the parabola right or a quadratic right um, which is fine and dandy right we can model certain things in, in the real world with with a quadratic, but what happens if we're dealing with something like volume, like let's say maybe in example two here? No longer is our, our equation um, a quadratic, and so you know this this has its shortcomings. It has its applicability, but it also has its shortcomings as well, right? And we're going to see that today. Um, I suppose sometimes you might be able to turn it into a quadratic and then complete the square. I don't know. That's a tough question. Right. What isn't a tough question is you guys can now you have another tool in your tool belt to answer these questions in a much faster way than completing the square. You remember completing the square could be a pain sometimes, right? Tedious. What's cool is we can use our calculus skills that we've learned as of late to actually answer these questions in, in a smaller amount of space. Right? Remember these questions took up a lot of space with completing the square, right? So there is something about these questions that does not change, right? And it's 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 arguably the hardest part of these questions. It was then and it is now. It's coming up with the equations sometimes that ultimately you have to derive or complete the square on. Okay, so what we'll just run through a couple examples, four examples today. Um, we've got a financial one, we've got kind of a Pythagorean theorem one, we've got a volume one, and we've got this area, familiar area question that I thought we'd kick off with today. Okay, so ultimately, here's what we want to do. Okay, a man wishes to enclose a rectangular area against the wall of a chicken house to form a chicken run. Okay, the wall is 50 meters long. He has 60 meters of fencing. Okay, that's an important piece of information. He's got 60 meters. Okay, what is the largest area he can include, enclose, and what are its dimensions? Okay, well, we're using, it sounds like, or just based on the picture, it looks like he's using the um, whatever he's got it up against here, like a house or something, right, as one of the side lengths, which makes this 60 meters of fencing go longer, right? So when we do that, we know we're going to have to use, for this, we're going to have to use our relationship between perimeter let me just write that out, perimeter. And then we're going to have an equation for the area. Okay? And we're going to use the perimeter to pivot to something that we can use for the area, right? So we know what the perimeter is, right? The perimeter is the distance around the outside, right? And we know that that can be 60 meters, right? That, or it has to be 60 meters. It can be. It has to be 60 meters because that's the amount of fencing that he has, right? So the perimeter has to equal 60 meters. So what is the perimeter then? Well, these two side lengths here, right, we have to call, or we could even call it W, right? But then we're going we're gonna to say W is X, just to keep it all into one variable or try to get it into one variable, okay? Um, and ultimately, the thing that we want to know is the length. We don't know what the length is, but that's what we're going to do, right? So we know that the perimeter in this particular situation, right, would be x plus l plus x has to equal 60. Well, you can collect like terms there to x plus l equals 60. Well, we can find out what the l value is or what l is with respect to x. And that would be l would be equal to 60 minus 2x, right? So now we can use this. Right? We can use this piece of information when we jump over to the area equation. Like We know what area is supposed to be equal to. Area, in theory, is 
length times width for a rectangle, right? And so if I were to use this, well, we, deno we, we denoted the fact that w was going to be x, and we now know what l is, right? So we can write that out. Area is going to equal 60 minus 2x, right? That's l, and we need to multiply that by x. So let's do the expansion on that. 60x minus 2x squared, right? Now, if I want to um, maximize the area, right, I'm going to need the slope of the tangent, right? That's what I'm interested in, right? But I want the slope of the tangent to specifically be zero. We've seen this a number of times now, right? So it means that anytime I'm, we're using the word tangent, that means we're going to derive. Well, what, what am I going to, what am I deriving is, is the question. Am I deriving this or am I deriving this? Well, it's asking me to maximize the area. So the thing that I'm interested in is the tangent of the area equation, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, I want to derive, I want to derive area with respect to x, right? That's what we're going to do. So when we do that, I'm going to derive this equation. Well, that's just a series of um, power laws, right? So I'm going to see that this is going to be 60 minus 4x would be the derivative of the area equation, right? So now you say, okay, well, if it's a maximum or a minimum, remember it's going to be optimization. We could, optimal values could take on maximums or minimums, right? Both. At both of those points, the slope is going to be equal to zero, right? So for uh, dA by dx is going to equal zero for a max slash min, right? We saw this already this last week, right? When we were trying to, uh, we were optimizing on a particular interval, right? So what we're going to say here is that zero, we're going to try and find out what x is such that um, that value of x sets the derivative equal to 0. 0 equals zero, 60 minus 4x. So we're going to solve for x, right? All right, well, 4x is going to get brought over, is going to be equal to 60, and x will equal 15. So we now know what the, the width, the width of the, the rectangle is, right? It's 15. But we don't know what the length is. That's what we're going to find out. L equals 60 minus 2 times, what's x? 15. Okay, so there are your dimensions that maximize the area under this scenario. This, for you remember, would have taken much, much more space. Right, so these are nice, right? The, the, the calculus is here to make your life easier, right? So take common situations and, and apply some calculus relative to some of our just regular old algebra, right? To actually answer the questions, right? So now we know, therefore, we can state the largest area. I suppose we didn't answer that part yet. The largest area. Remember, I, I suppose after you know what length and width are, you can go back and figure out what the actual maximum area would be, right? We could do that down here. Why don't we do that right now before we write the therefore statement? So max area will equal uh, length times width. Well, we know what the length and width are, right? So it's going to be 15 times 30. So we should see 450 meters squared okay so we can we can continue our therefore statement here the largest area um, would be 450 meters squared right when the Fifteen meters by thirty meters. Okay. 
So I don't know. It, it kind of it's nice to revisit a question and and answer it in a different way, right? With a more robust method, right? Um, that's ultimately more efficient, right? But it's the, the exact same concept, okay? Um, so that's that, right? We'll, we'll jump down, we'll do example two, and then I'll do the other two examples in, the, in a later video, okay? So let, let's come down here and figure out what we got going on here, okay? So we've got kind of this open box. Okay, and I think the one thing that you got to remember here, the hardest part of these questions is coming up with these equations, right? We know, okay, the top here in this particular question. An open top storage box is, is to have a square base and vertical sides, okay? If eight, 108 meters squared of sheet metal is available for its construction, find the dimensions of a maximum volume, okay? So maximum volume here. Not sure how the quadratics would, would handle a volume question, right? Because it's a different kind of graph, right? So this, this would be an instance where you wouldn't be able to do this question until you took calculus, right? And we can apply a, a more robust method to a more complicated question and see how things are changing, okay? So here's what we need to do. I think in, in theory that the concept doesn't change here, right? We're going to have, we're going to try and represent the scenario in, um, one equation and then use a second equation to actually answer the question, right? So here's what we're going to do, right? We know that the bottom has to be a square. That's what it told us in the question, right? So we're going to have a length, a length and a width, right? And they're both going to equal x, right? Because it has to, it has to be a square. And the top, don't forget, we'll just color in the top. The top's going to be open, right? So, how do you find a volume? Well, we need three dimensions for a volume. Well, we need to know what H is, okay? And so, that's what we're going to solve for, right? How do we solve for that? Well, we're going to need, like, to answer this question, we're going to need two equations ultimately, right? We're, and and we, we're interested in that we've got surface area. We can find what the surface area is actually equal to, right? And conveniently in the question, it told us what the surface area was. Not explicitly, but we know. You know, if you only have 108 meters squared of sheet metal available, that's going to be your surface area, right? So we know that there's 108 meters squared of surface area. But we can use the same idea where we have surface area, and then we can come up here and we know what the volume is going to equal to, right? Volume is going to equal length times width times height. Well, I know that it's going to be x times x, but I don't know what h is yet, right? And so we're going to use surface area to find out what H is so that I can substitute it into there. And that's how you tackle these questions. Okay. So that's what we need to do. Surface area, you'll recall, we need to find the area of the bottom plus uh, the area of the sides. Right. Uh, plus area. Well, I suppose area of, here, I'll be more specific, area of front and back. And then we need the area of sides, left and right, okay? And that has to equal 108, right? We know that. I'll change that down to an F and B. Okay, so let's just run with this now, right? Area of bottom. Well, what is the area of the bottom? Well, the area of the bottom is going to be X times X, so X squared. Area of the front and back. Well, this is where things get a little bit more complicated now, right? Because I'm going to have how many front and backs? Well, front and back would just make a 2. How would I find, look, I'm going to have two faces. How would I find the area? Well, it would be x times h. Okay. And then the same thing here. Left and right sides, I'm going to have 2xh again, right? And that's going to equal 108. And then the last part is, well, let's, let's clean this up. And we'll isolate for h, shall we? Okay, so x squared 
plus 4xh is equal to 108. Okay, and now I can start isolating. So I can say, okay, well, uh, 4xh is going to equal 108 minus x squared. I can divide both sides by 4x. And I get the fact that h is going to equal 108 minus x squared divided by 4x. So you now know, this is what I'm talking about, we're using one equation. This is the very first thing I said earlier this morning, I think, was we're using one equation. In this particular instance, we're using the fact of surface area, right? We're using it to pivot to volume through finding what h is actually equal to. Okay, so we can come up here now. We can write what h is equal to. 108. This is half the question's over now, right? And, and arguably, if uh, the only way these questions can get really hard is if this this equation over here is is complicated in, from the standpoint of finding the derivative, right? And that's pretty much it, right? So this here is the hard part. Setting this up is the hard part. You're going to see finding the derivative with this particular line of questioning isn't necessarily difficult unless you get something more complicated like product or quotient rule, right? Depending on the scenario. Okay, but the, the process is always the same. We're going to have to come up with um, an equation to derive, right? And then you set the derivative of whatever equation you're deriving equal to zero. That's an optimization, right? You know it's going to be a minimum or a maximum, right? So let's maximize the volume now, right? That's what we're going to do. You know what H is, so we can plug that in there now, right? h, then we have to multiply this by 108 minus x squared over 4x, right? Well, it looks like I can cancel one of these x's with one of the x's over here, and I'm going to have to distribute. I can distribute the one, the x into this equation. Okay, so we can do that. So we get 108x minus x cubed over 4, which will reduce to 27x minus 1 quarter x cubed. Now, can we derive this, right? We want to optimize the volume, right? So we know I want to derive, right? Right here, I want to want to, uh, let's say, do derive the volume equation that we found with respect to x. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to say, but, one other thing, sorry, we know that this is going to equal zero, right, for an optimization question, right? So that's what we're going to do. Let's do that. So we're going to say, dv by dx has to equal negative 3 quarters x squared plus 27. Okay? And then we can say, well, that has to equal 0. So let's solve. Solve for x. Right? That's what we're going to do. So we're going to get negative 3 quarters x squared is equal to negative 27 right and then we're going to see uh, negative 3x squared is equal to 108 right and then we can see x squared if I was to bring this over 108 divided by negative 3 will be 36 negative 36 Oh, one sec, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Forgot the negative. I was like, why we shouldn't get a negative there? There we go. Right? So we know that x is going to equal plus minus root 36, which is going to equal plus minus 6. Now, the problem here is, like in physics, anytime we've seen this before, you know, we know that that's our answer, but x has to be greater than or equal to 0, right? because we can't have negative dimensions here, so that doesn't make any sense. So we know that our answer has to equal um, 
or x value anyway, we still haven't quite finished the question off yet, but we know that x equals half, x has to equal 6. Okay, so we have one thing left to do, and that is to find what the actual maximum volume is, if I know what x is, right? So we can do that, right? We can plug that into um, the volume equation there. Right, so we know that volume max is going to equal 6 times 6. The problem here is, well, I'm going to have to plug in 6 into x squared. When you do that, I won't bore you with the details, but you should get 3. Okay, so those are the dimensions that would maximize the volume, right? I actually don't think it didn't even ask for it. It just wanted the dimensions, okay? So there you go. Those are the dimensions that would maximize the volume of this box with an open top, okay? So actually quite reasonable as long as you can come up with the equations. It's reasonable, okay? This is a lot of the challenges coming up with the equations, right? Same challenge from grade 10, okay? So the more of these you do, the more experience you get in, uh, you know, the tricks of working with these questions. Like, okay, for a maximum area question, I can I can find the perimeter and then plug that into the area. For the volume questions, you can use surface area and then volume. Did I say volume? Area equation. Okay. For these questions here, same thing. Okay. You're pivoting. You're going to try and use two separate equations. Okay. So what we'll do in uh, the later video here is we'll do a Pythagorean theorem question. And then we'll have like kind of an optimization in economics, okay? So kind of a, a situation. You've seen these questions as well before, okay? What optimizes the uh, amount of money, right? So anyway, that's that. I'll post this up, and uh, uh, you guys can have a go at the homework questions, and I'll do the other two questions in a later video.